in the today's disc discussion after reciting this sloka. Please repeat after me. Tava katham ritam tapta jivanam kabhi viriritam kalma shapaham sravana mangalam Sri Madatatam Bhuvi Grinanti E Bhuri Da Janaha. Those who spread them broadcast are verily magnanimous. They distribute what is completely satisfying to the hearers. What is that? They say, this is the words of God. The sin effacing utterances. And this sin effacing utterances means this is actually whatever the wrong conception that we are having that is removed. Now, the conception that we are human beings, second, we are related to this world, and third, we take birth. We live for some time, then we die. This is the whole conception. And as long as we are living, how best we can live. That is the whole idea. Now, on the basis of this only, we are trying to develop this world and as maximum comfort that we can give to us that we are trying. But the ultimate goal is happiness. Ultimate desire to live eternally. The ultimate wishes to know everything. These are the three things always hidden in the every human soul. We like to know everything. And we like to live for eternity. We don't like to die. And we want all through every moment, the joy. What is the secret? That is the reason the God, he comes down, takes the human form, and he expresses the what is all this. Today, the Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, as he was explaining the different things, today he will be explaining spirituality and the householder's life. How difficult it is. Millions and millions of how, oh, householders are there. How to develop the spirituality? So here we find that the discussion is going on. And in the last time, as we have discussed already, that all depends on God's will. So that is a type of discussion. Now here it comes and says, you have to exert you have to try your that effort that you will be given that will also bring the good result did you hear the song that he is asking the song is the wonderful way and that was the special way of bhagavan sri ramakrishna to express to explain his ideologies why sir should one hold to god with one hand and to the world with the other. As Sri Ramakrishna was telling, now you should hold God with one hand and the world other. That means you do your, your whatever responsibilities, duties, but at the same time keep on repeating the name of God so that when the time will come, you can give up the other hand and completely surrender yourself to God. So that is the way he says and what is this samsara what is this world that we see in sanskrit they say satya anite mrituni kritve it is mixed with truth and untruth this is the mixed and what is the truth that we will discuss today that is very very special when we say the false does it mean that it is not there it is there but in a different form, explaining things in a different way. When we say he told the lies, now 
just now I got the, I was reading the newspaper, I found that a, uh, the, a minister in Canada, he is in great difficulty. He is from Indian origin. He went to India. He boasted over there. And whatever he informed over there, that was not true. So obviously, the objections are coming. If the minister is giving wrong information in a foreign country, how can he be the minister of this country? So that fellow said, I'm sorry, I just exaggerated something. That's true, I'm sorry for that. Now things are going on in this way. Whatever it may be, not that he didn't say the things he said, but in a different manner. When he said things in a different manner, which is not exactly, we said untruth, false, mitta. But the moment we say mitta, does it mean that it is not existing? It is existing, only in a different form. When Shankaracharya is telling this jagat mitya, brahma satya jagat mitya. The Brahman is truth and this Jagat, this universe that you see, it is completely untruth. That does it mean it is not there. When you translate that word, we always say it is not there, wrong. It is there. The only thing, we don't see it, understand it properly. So that is the Mithya. So this way the conversation was going on. Now here, when that gentleman told, why don't you plunge completely, 100% dedicating ourselves for the realization of God? What is the problem? See, this is emotional utterances. We like to realize God now, like the Bhagavan Buddha, he sat on one place and then resolved that, Yahashane Shashutume Shariram, I am going to give up the body here itself on this seat unless and until I realize the truth. Can we do that? Before that, he had a wonderful preparation, great preparation, and he was almost reaching to the ultimate. Then only it, it became. Whatever promises you take and you see it, and after half an hour, knees will pain, back will pain, there'll be a phone call, and people will be waiting for you, then you have to get up, well, I, tomorrow I will try, this tomorrow will, go on repeating. It goes in that way. So when that he is telling like this, this gentleman out of emotion, why you are asking us to hold God in one hand, why not in two hands? But he was not sincere. He was just out of emotion, he was telling. Sri Ramakrishna is telling, did you listen to the song? Monre Krishikat Janan is a very famous song by a great uh, the sage. And he was a tantrika, he practiced the tantra sadhana, he realized God through the tantric way. And there, only thing that he used to do, compose the song and sing, and the great devotion, and he got the realization. So, Amon manov jomin roila potid abad korle foltoshona. That is the Bengali way. This human life, it was there as if it's a beautiful land, fertile land. But unfortunately, you have not utilized this land. It is just barren like this. You could raise a lot of uh, uh, this. You could utilize this land. So Manob Jameen, the human as if is the land that could be utilized. But when you are putting the seeds, what happens? When they are growing up, the birds come, animals come, and they eat up and all the things. So many types of people will be coming to eat that up. To protect that particular tree, what you should do? Kali name daure vera fashole tachrupavena. Then he says, the hedge indeed, that you have to give all around. Then you will get the fruit, then you will get the crops. Otherwise, you won't. So that is the thing. And what is that Kali Nama? Go on repeating the name of Kali. So what a householder should do? Go on repeating the name of God. 
That's all, not, nothing else. You need not to bother about that. Whatever duty you are doing, you do. And maximum the morality to practice that you should practice. And at the same time, go on repeating the name of God. Kali Nami Daure Bera Hoshuli Tachiru Pabina. Why? Because Sriji Mukta Keshi Shakta Bera. It's a very, very hard fencing. And even the greatest enemy, that is the Yama, the king of death, he won't be able to approach you. So that way he says, and he says that he who has realized God, it is page 326, he who has realized God knows that God himself has become the world and all living beings. This is pure Vedanta that he is talking. But he is not using the Brahman. He is using the word God. So it is a devotional approach, but it is a Vedanta. In the Vedantic way, if you say, you will say, the Brahman, they created this universe, and the Brahman entered into it. Tad sishtva tamiva anupravishat. Tad, this world. They were discussing about this world. Who has created this universe? So God has, the Brahman has created. Tad Srishtva, after creating this universe, but it is inert. So you, you need the life, the consciousness. So what he did? Tad Srishtva, Tamiba Anupravishat, Tad Eva Anupravishat. And he entered as Eve entered into it. And that is the God created human being and he gave the life into it. So that is the way the Christianity and Islam, so everything. As because the Buddhism do not accept the conception of God or anything, so they didn't explain. But this he said, one who has realized God, what he will see, that is the ultimate thing. One who has realized God or make progress in the spiritual life, can he criticize others? No. Because he will see that the same God who is sitting as an very ordinary, very unintellectual person, almost an idiot sitting over there, he's also God. But a very intelligent person, that is also manifestation of God. So how you will criticize? It is his will. So here he says, the he who has realized God knows that God himself has become the world and all living being. When you feed your child, now on the basis of this, now a householder should practice spirituality in everyday life. How? He is giving a very simple example. When you are feeding your child, you should feel that you are feeding God. You should feel, you should think strongly. That's all. That is the spirituality that you will be practicing. And that is so simple. You need not to go to anywhere. Only at home you can practice it. And you should look on your father and mother as venerable manifestation of God. And the divine mother and serve them as such. If a man enters the world after realizing God, he does not generally keep up physical relations with his wife. Both of them are devotees. They love to talk only of God and pass their time in spiritual conversation. They serve other devotees of God, for they know that God alone has become all living beings. And knowing this, they the devotee, they live into the service of the others. That is the householder's life. Husband and wife, but at the same time, they feel that we are both the devotee of God. I have seen some of the families, husband and wife, they're so devoted to God. And they have a wonderful routine right from the morning to the night. Every day, they'll be doing like that. I have seen a very, very elderly person and he, 
they are the parents of one of our Swamiji. I went to s see them. They get up early in the morning, they go to Ganga after bathing, they come back. Then they will worship the Shiva, they are the Shiva worshippers. They will worship the Shiva and after that is complete, the gentleman will be worshipping and the lady will be helping him to worship. After that is done, then the lady will prepare some breakfast, very simple breakfast. They will eat the breakfast and then afterwards they will open a book and read from there, both of them reading and listening. And then afterwards the gentleman will go out for marketing and little bit. In the meantime, he is clean, she is cleaning the... This way, whole life is going on. 11 o'clock, once again, they sit and read some books, then they meditate, then they pray, then whatever the food they offer to God, then they eat, take a little rest, get up in the then afternoon, again open a book and read, then go out, both of them, for a walking and saying hello to the neighbors. And whatever the, the socializing here and there, they come back, evening prayer. After the evening prayer, read the book, and for a whatever long time possible, practice the spirituality, eat some again, little food, and then the sleep. Life is going on in this routine. The wonderful life, so happy. People are all around people also, neighbors are also coming. So sometimes some people say after the retirement from the job, we are dissatisfied and what to do and what not to do. Whatever possibility is there, if you can help, help others and think that I am serving God, satisfaction will come and joy will come. That is the teaching of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. And here the person is telling, but sir, such a husband and wife are not to be found anywhere. He said, it is not possible. Master Sri Ramakrishna is telling, yes, they can be found, though they may be very rare. You cannot say it is impossible. It is possible. They can be found, though they may be very rare. That is okay. The worldly people cannot recognize them. In order to lead such a life, both husband and wife must be spiritual. Here, the Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is not using the word religious. He is telling spiritual. It is possible to lead such a life if both of them have tested the bliss of God. So not immediately it is possible. If they have practiced for a long time, then they will know and whatever the japa that we do, if you have noticed when you are morning, you are getting and then doing the japa and after that immediately should not leave the seat, quietly just you are sitting, you'll see that wonderful, the impression will come on you, the happiness will be there in the mind. So that way, both of them, if they are having, if they have tested the bliss of God, God's special grace is necessary to create such a couple. Otherwise, there will be, always will be misunderstanding between them. And in that case, the one has to leave the other, life becomes very miserable if husband or wife do not agree. See, this is the regular thing that you always find. So husband and wife is not agreeing and so many problems are coming up and all this. But if there is a common interest is there, then there is no problem. So that is the thing. Is the common interest is there. Little bit of these things and that thing everywhere. So how to utilize our life, those who are in the household, how to live happily? This is the, a common thing is necessary where both the minds will go and meet. Other little bit of things, okay. Sometimes the he is telling I won't go, she is telling I would like to go. These are those little bit of things always they Human personality, you no know, differs. But the common thing is there. One gentleman told in the Ramakrishna mission, there is no spiritual people. Title, how do you know that? So his thing is spirituality means miracle. You have to show the miracle. Ramakrishna mission, Swami never liked that and never show that. So he thought that the miracle is not there. Whether we are coming, everybody is touching the head and hugging them and then give, nothing like that. What is then spirituality? 
Then I told you, see, here we are 2,000 educated young men. Each and every one is having his own ideology, ideals, and his own philosophy. And you ask any problem, immediately any question, he will give in his own views, express that. That means strong personalities are there, not that whatever you say we are following, not, not like that. But at the same time, 2,000 of us, we are living in this organization, listening to our seniors, whatever they say, immediately we try to do that, and not only one day or two, lifelong we are doing. How it is possible? Because we have a common interest. All our th minds are going and meeting in Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. Whatever these, our seniors are telling, there is a command of the God I must do, and because that will bring good to me satisfaction. So work we are doing, bichara, all this knowledge that also we are following, meditation and other devotional things that also we are following. But at the same time, one common interest is there that is to develop the spirituality. How to develop the spirituality? By banishing the ego. When you can minimize your ego, banish your ego, the completely free from the ego, then you are spiritual. Sri Ramakrishna is talking about the spirituality. Devotee, there are such other obstacles beside the children may be disobedient, apart from the, the husband, wife, the disagreement and others, maybe children are disobedient. There is no end of difficulties. Now, sir, what is the way? He is asking. He's asking the all the so practical. See, at the time of Sri Ramakrishna, the same thing is with there. Same type of problem. It is extremely difficult to practice spiritual discipline at the same time lead a householder's life. Sri Ramakrishna is admitting. And he is also, he also said that if a householder practicing spirituality and he takes one step towards God, God will come 20 steps towards him. Because the God also understands what difficulty he is following. There's a story, the Narada always, and he became boastful and said to God, I am your best devotee, isn't it? I am taking the name of God all the time. I never do anything except looking at you and all these things. He said, that's true, every time you are doing, but can you please go and see the great devotees there whom I really consider the one of the best devotees. You go and look at him. He is a cultivator, he is a very ordinary person, he is a poor man. Go and see how he is doing. See, I will, you can understand the great devotee. Then he went over there and he saw the man right from the morning he got up, Jai Bhagavan, then he will just glory it unto God, he will take the name of God and he will jump to work, he will he have to take the uh, things to the, uh, the field and cultivating the field and doing all day work, coming back, washing himself and taking the name of God once only and sleeping because next morning he had to get up. So he observed for two, three days and came back. You consider him as a devotee? Look at him, he is taking only twice, only morning, one only time he takes in the morning and in the end, before going to bed, he takes your name only once. I am taking millions of times, con constantly. Then he said, that's true. But can you please do one thing for me? He gave uh, a small cup full of uh, the oil and said, without splitting even a drop, you have to go and uh, come round to this. Just one little place that he showed him, but one little drop should not fall. Go and do it. Not at the way, into it great cautiously, constantly thinking that one drop should not fall. He came back, he was very happy, not a single drop fell on the ground. I am successful, great. But how many times you took my name? Your name, how is that is possible? I was constantly putting my whole name of mind over here. That is the reason. 
and that person he is taking so much of responsibility to maintain his family even then he is taking name twice in the morning and the evening and only a little bit of this thing you were you could not take even and then you be, before starting you could take my name you forgot that and after completing that you could take my name that also you forgot let's look at it who is great so that is why one monk wrote to ma sarada mani devi i am taking the name of god in the daytime in the night in the evening but i don't realize god the mother in reply wrote you have become a monk you have left your heart and home there is no other job for you except taking the name of god go on doing that what else you will do so for the monks they are supposed to take the name of god and if they are doing any work they should consider that i am doing god's work 24 hours they should remember because that is the reason they have left their heart and home and that is the reason the society is supporting them if they don't do that that is a sin that they will be creating they are committing they should not so sri ramakrishna is and that is he said yes it is extremely difficult to practice spiritual discipline at the same time to lead a householder's life but still there is a way out he said still there is a way out one should pray to god one first thing one should pray to god second going now and then into solitude third make efforts to realize him these three things the, the my planning is that we should have we are already having a, one, i think four guest rooms sometimes people they come but the majority of them and not for that spiritual practices they come over here stay over here and then they take a car and go to visit the chicago city and all that young people is okay but some people may come and stay at least for 7 days 10 days away from home and taking little food coming and sitting you know that this is very very calm and quiet place library is there read book and do little help to the shamis whatever way it is possible very very few people they do that that because that urge is not there so they can do you have to come and stay all alone the sri ramakrishna is very very practical and he is giving this instruction that it is extremely difficult to practice spiritual discipline at the same time lead a household of life then he said but still there is a way out one should pray to god I have seen a lady, American lady. She comes over here. She sits in that corner, and she'll be praying continuously. Sometimes, I go to her and say, "Won't you take little food or any coffee or tea?" No, I am fine. She is going on praying continuously. If she has not got something inside, it is impossible to sit like that for such a long time. Another gentleman comes. He also sits on the floor. and then going on praying one day i i thought what is it because it was little dark and then i saw the human being sitting over there for such a long time the people are there not that they are not but if you get the proper guidance then it is good what you should do pray to god going now and then into solitude and make effort to realize him then the gentleman is asking he is also very practical must one leave home then he is asking the sri ramakrishna no not all together whenever you have leisure go into solitude for a day or two that will be sufficient at that time don't have any relation with the outside world and don't hold any conversation with the worldly people worldly people means all the not general things and worldly affairs you must live either in solitude or in the company of holy men the retreats that you organize 
what is the purpose? This is the purpose. Giving an opportunity in America, a real opportunity. In India, we don't have this type of facilities. Which ashram will be having such a huge facility as we are having in the Ganges? And majority of the ashramas, even in America, they are not having all these facilities that the Ganges retreat is having. I have seen that one for only in the morning all they go and the whole day they spin and come back because there is no facility to stay. Ganges is really good. Uh, nowadays, the trend I, I just observed, people are coming and going and staying over there. They call it personal retreat. So that is also good. That way they go and read the books and all empty, no one is there. You are compelled to sit quiet. There is no one to talk to. So that is the way it is Sri Ramakrishna is again and again he is talking and he is, what is the spirituality actually and it says that the spirituality I was quoting in somewhere I think in Sacramento in the talk and Subhahitam, Shubha Hitam so that is the uh, book is there the wonderful quotations are there and it says para upakara artham para upakara artham bahanti nadya the rivers flowing for the benefit of others is taking from the uh, nature para upakara artham dahanti gayah the cows give milk for the benefit of others para upakaram phalanti brikshah the trees bear fruit for the benefit of others. That tree itself is not eating the fruits. And parupukara idam shariram, the human body meant for the service of others. When you think in that way, everything that I see in the nature, they are giving everything for the benefit of others. My human body my intellect, my all these things that I am having, it should be devoted for the benefit of others, that is spirituality. This thought and the action followed with this thought, spirituality. Knowledge about spirit, and what is that spirit? Spirit, spirit is non-physical. Anything non-physical is infinite. Anything non-physical is infinite. So that is called the spirituality. Here in, it, it goes in this way. And the Lord Jesus and the Saint John in his book is mentioning, I am the spirit. Then he that worshipeth me as spirit worshipeth me in truth. The Jesus is also telling I am the spirit. And always we make the mistake that Jesus to be followed. What is that Jesus who gave the life in the cross? No, he's not the human being. He came, took that human form, that particular people all around that he inspired them, but his teaching is eternal. What is that? I am the spirit. And spirit has no form. And spirit is eternal. If not that, then it is not the spirit. I am the spirit and he that worshipeth me, worshipping me as spirit, worshipping me in truth. And that is the reality. If you worship me only in this form, there's the only way, this inspiration. Sometimes some people make the same mistake in the in Hinduism, Krishna. Those who were the followers of Krishna, again, they narrowed their views. Only Krishna is the God. Sarva dharman parityajya mame kam sharanam braja. You give up everything and then. What is the meaning of that? Give up all your responsibility. Have complete faith in me. I will take care of you. And who is that I? All pervading God. All powerful God. That is the spirit. The moment we close down to only that figure, that is the narrowness, and we make the mistake. 
the before Krishna, there was no people, spiritual people. After those Krishna, people who do not believe in that particular form, are they not spiritual? These are the question. Only your understanding in between, and not else. Jesus Christ is 2,000 years. Before Jesus Christ, humanity is last at least 10,000 years. Then all these last 8,000 years before Jesus, they were not religious at all. All of them had gone to hell. hell. It cannot be. And those who are not believing the Jesus, will they also go to hell? That cannot be. So we have to interpret things in a right spirit. And this is the call. In the Hinduism also, Devam Bhutva Devam Yajit. When you worship, we sit, and then what we do, the very first thing we do, Om Vishnu, Om Vishnu, Om Vishnu. I am that Vishnu everywhere. Vishnu means everywhere. Vistareti Vishnu. I am the spirit. And so many times, it's all making you are thinking, I am the divine, I am the divine, I am the divine. Then you are worshipping the divinity. Raising yourself to divine stage, and then only you are worshipping. Regular, if you are doing the worship, it becomes just a normal thing. But if you are sincerely doing it, you are really every, every day worship means you are feeling that complete, that meditation, I am the spirit. Bhagavan, the Swami Vivekananda, he said, the spiritual knowledge is the only thing that can destroy our miseries forever. Miseries for what? We are limited. So naturally I'm afraid. When I'm afraid, so I want the suffering is there. So all type of miseries only because of the wrong notion, wrong knowledge. The spirituality is the only knowledge that can help you to go beyond that. And there are different type of dhanam giving that you know, donation we give and the help we give there are four types categories are four dana jnana vidya prana and khadya food now when you are giving spiritual knowledge that is the best dana that we are helping swami uh, turiyananda ji maharaj he was very sick and one young boy, a brahmachari, he used to serve him. One day the brahmachari was coming down. Then Turiyanandaji started scolding him. Then after that, another senior Swami, his brother disciple, asked him, Swami, why are you scolding? He looks after you so much. But still, why you scolded him? Then the Swami told, he looks after only this physical body. I looks after his soul. As, as a spiritual leader, I am looking after his soul. And they look after only this physical body. And this is the duty of a spiritual leader to see that his followers, his disciples, his people should not make any wrong state. That is his duty as a spiritual father, as a spiritual mother. Majority of the time we don't do that. Of course, when the number is small, it is impossible. But when the number is less and those who are very close to you, serving you physically, you must have to say. Majority of the time we don't do that. Let them go. No, that is wrong. You must have to tell them, point it out to them that this is the wrong way that you are doing and by doing it, you are actually not making any progress in the spiritual life. So that is the real responsibility of the spiritual leaders, spiritual teachers, the gurus. Turiyanandaji, they are the great gurus. And that is the reason they used to do like that. Another wonderful incident is there in New York. One lady, American lady, she used to come. She used to complete her all household work and then she used to take a tram and cross the whole city and attending the, arranging the class for the Swami. 
and arranging his food, arranging his house, room, and then also taking the notes of his lecture, collecting the donation from the people who have come, visited. And now even after all these, Swami used to scold her all the time. Whenever there's a little occasion, he will go on scolding that lady. One day it was too much, so she asked the Swamiji, why do you scold me? You don't scold others. Why are you scolding me? The Swamiji looked at her and said, because I like to see you perfect. I like to see you perfect. That is the reason the scolding means all the time giving that teaching that you must be perfect, you must be perfect. So that is spirituality. Spiritual knowledge is the highest for it saved from many, many and many a birth. Swami Vivekananda, I am quoting, many, many and many a birth. That is the spiritual knowledge. Sri Ramakrishna is mentioning about this spiritual knowledge. And then he, he is continuing and he says, he who has surrendered his body, my, this gentleman is a wonderful. And he is asking another question. You have just said that one must go in solitude or in the company of a, in the company of holy men. Then he is asking, how can you recognize a holy man? Those are good questions. And immediately Sri Ramakrishna is giving the answer. He is telling, he who has surrendered his body, mind and innermost self into God is utterly a holy man. He has nothing else except God. In his thought, in his behavior, in his manner, in his life, full of that God consciousness. He who has surrendered his body, mind and innermost self to God is surely a holy man. This is very subtle thing. Completely very, very inner thing. How you will understand that? Then, next he said, he who has renounced the lost and gold is surely a holy man. So whether he has surrendered his mind to God or not, how to know? But if a person has given up the lost and gold, no desire, for the wealth, no desire for the physical comfort. That is surely a holy man. He is a holy man. And he says, who never forgets to look upon a woman as his mother and to offer her his worship if he happens to be near her. The holy man constantly thinks of God and does not indulge in the talk except about spiritual things. Further, he serves all being, knowing that God resides in everybody's heart. These, in general, are the signs of holy man. Advesta sarvabhutanam maitra karuna evacha nirmama nirahamkara sama dukkha sukha shami Santushta satatam yogi yatatma dranishchaya. In the Bhagavad Gita, 16th chapter, the third, first, second, and third slokas, 26 qualities. That is holy man. And the moment you do that, the first is advishta sarvabhutanam. That is the first thing. The moment you say, if you are following my philosophy, my ideology, my God, my church, you are not a holy man. In the first step, you failed. Because the broadness should be there. But at the same time, you have to guide the people that if you are going over there, it may create problem. A group of people, they came, they wanted to come over here, they wanted to participate. I talked to them and I found that the leader of that group is a very egoistic person. Then I told, okay, sir, we will contact you afterwards if it is possible, ever possible. So let, let me, at this moment, I cannot. I did never introduce him with the devotees. I knew it will be difficult, difficult for our devotees. So that is the reason, understanding whom we can introduce and what is better way, 
as a father, a spiritual father, that we should try. So because after so many years of experience, we understand what the goodness is there in a human being, that particular person is a good person. But the standard of spiritual development is very, very primary. So that is the reason we should not. Must one always live in solitude? This man is again asking. Must one live in solitude? Then Master Sri Ramakrishna is telling, haven't you seen the trees on the footpath along a street? They are fenced around as long as they are very young. Otherwise, cattle destroy them. But there is no longer any need of fences when their, tr when their trunks grow thick and strong. Then they won't break even if an elephant is tied to them. Sri Ramakrishna, immediate example. So long that you are growing up into spirituality, you need that fencing. Don't go to anyone. And most of the people, they will be reading this book, that book, and then, and then thoroughly confused. So then we say, read only those books. Today I have received a letter from a very young man, a student from Europe. And he said, I need your guidance. I know there are so many books, but I need your guidance because what are the books that I should start with? So that way, slowly, 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 if you are growing up, then you will see, oh yes, it is possible. And the best books that you can understand, that is Swami Vivekananda's Four Yogas. It's a real excellent guidances. The four yogas, because these are the four paths, four attitudes, four different temperaments of a human being that is leading to the God. Swami Vivekananda gave that path. Don't read any other books. An explanation of the others. Read the original. Because who is Swami Vivekananda? Sri Ramakrishna himself. Me and you are not different, Sri Ramakrishna told so many times. I and you are one. If the Sri Ramakrishna giving that expression, the God himself is giving the expression and he is giving what is the bhakti, the devotion. Wonderful way he is taking our mind. And if I feel this is the path for me, read that, follow that. Apply those things in your life. If you think that karma yoga, there's the path through the unselfish work, that inspires you, follow that. Take a one ideology and live into that. So that is the guidance. Then here we find the neighbor is asking, Swami, Sri Ramakrishna is telling that, that discrimination is telling you have to apply your discrimination. First is spirituality, then he is telling discrimination. What is discrimination? This gentleman is asking. And Sri Ramakrishna, discrimination is the reasoning by which one knows that God alone is real and all else is unreal. He is not telling false. Unreal. Brahma Satya Jagat Mitha. Jiva Brahmaiva Na Apara. That is what is the statement of Shankaracharya. The moment he said Mitha, we naturally translate it false. And whenever we think it is a false, we think it is not existing. No. It is there. Sri Ramakrishna perfectly is telling unreal. Real and unreal. What is the difference? Again, he is clarifying what is real and unreal. Real means eternal. And unreal means impermanent. Now we know anything that is permanent is real. What are the things that are permanent? Except God, except the spirit, except the Brahman, nothing is permanent. The Buddha, Bhagavan Buddha is not permanent, but Buddha hood. Buddha means knowledge, the jnana. That is permanent. 
but not the body that realized that, not that person who realized that. So Buddha, he was Gautama, because he was, his foster mother was Gautami, so naturally he, his name was Gautama. And Go, Buddha's mother was Maya Devi, father was Shuddhodhana, look at this, Shuddha, this pure, and that is the dhana, that is the treasure. The purity is the treasure. And the mother is the maya, the illusion. The moment he was born, within one or two days, the maya, the mother who is binding, she died, she passed away. Then the lady who came and helped him to grow up is Gautama. From there, Gautami, from there to Gautama. So he was famous as Gautama. Then Siddhartha, then Buddha. So these three names. And this is the discrimination and the reasoning by which one knows that God alone is real. And real means eternal. He who has acquired discrimination knows that God is the only substance of all else is non-existent. With the awakening of the spirit of discrimination, a man wants to know God. On the contrary, if a man loves the unreal, such things as creature comforts, name, fame, and the wealth, then he doesn't want to know God, who is the very nature of reality. Through discrimination between the real and the unreal, one seeks to know God. And Adi Shankaracharya, in his famous treatise, famous book, Viveka Churamani, in the 15th verse, he mentioned, Ato Bichara Kattebhya. Now, Bichara, discrimination, is necessary. Who will do that? Jigasho Atma Vastunaha. The seeker of spirituality should take to reasoning. If you are not seeker of spirituality, reasoning is not. Out of emotion we go to God and we go only to give us some protection. You need not to bother about the discrimination. But if you are a real seeker of God, you really like to know that. First is bichara, discrimination. And what type of discrimination? Whether the God is real, eternal or not. That is the discrimination. And then again, Shankara, in 18th sloka of the same book, he mentioned, Ado nitya anitya vastu viveka pariganyati. First is discrimination between the real and the unreal. And the beginning of the spiritual life, discrimination. In the beginning, we are coming to the school and then learning alphabets and this slowly growing up. Then we are going to the colleges. Then we are thinking what type of knowledge that I should acquire. If, if this I can learn, whether I can help the society and also can earn money. So they calculate and then they learn. Similarly, in the spiritual life also, when we have grown up that, because of the parents, because of the environment, we come and we come to the spirituality, to the temple, we do the worship. And when one place I went in America here, with small children, the parents, they have taught them, they're coming and just like the Indian tradition, they'll be lying down on the floor and offering pranam, not knowing what they're doing. The born in America, grew up in America, studying in American school, this Indian culture, this is very good, respecting the senior. But why? That is the question. When they grow up, they must get this knowledge. Parents should tell them that this is the thing that we are teaching you because of this, 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 this thing. When that is there, they are clear. Then with great zeal and love, they will follow the path of God. Otherwise, just go to temple and do something rituals without understanding what we are doing. And after a few times, they'll be they'll thinking what actually we are doing. Just because for the sake of the parents we are going or by sheer habit, okay. 
they will never get the benefit of spirituality. And that is what Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he was teaching us today that it should be, one should be very, very careful. So today we have learned from Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna two things. One is, God is the only reality because he is eternal. We're telling God, it may be called as many other things also, in many other names also. That's the only reality. And one should try to realize that reality. How? First he said that you must go into a solitude and read your own mind. And then do not spend your time gossiping or reading this or that. Concentrate. Why I have come to this solitude? I want to know this. No, it is not possible to go to a holy man, a holy person, get the guidance, holy people. Then you get the guidances. Who are the holy people? He has given all the qualities a holy person should have. The first thing is, the most important thing is, should not have any desire for worldly name, fame, prosperity. That is the person. Second, he should not have any narrowness. He should have all love for each and every one, whoever comes. So that is the holy. Third, discrimination. What is the discrimination? Real and unreal. And then fourth, prayer. Constantly keeping your mind on that. So this is the teaching that we learn today from Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. Let us conclude after offering this pranam mantra. Niranjanam nityam anantarupam bhaktanukampa Drita Bigraham Bai Isha Vataram Paramishamidyam Tam Ramakrishnam Shirasanamama Sri Ramakrishna, the perfect embodiment of the eternal truth, which manifests itself in various forms to help mankind, and the incarnation of the Supreme Lord, who is worshipped by all. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Sri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu Arpanamastu